chapter one of Colossians. Reading from verse 12 to 23 and reading out of the King James. Giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear Son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins, who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers. All things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself, by him I say whether they be things in earth or things in heaven. And you that were sometime alienated and enemies in your mind, by wicked works, yet now hath you reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy and unblameable and unreprovable in his sight. If ye continue in the faith grounded and settled and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am a minister. Amen. Tonight, we are looking at the power of the blood of Jesus. And our text talks to us about reconciliation. It talks about God bringing back order, reordering our lives, reordering our perception, reordering systems, as it were, reordering brothers and sisters, the things that are out of alignment through the power of his blood. And so tonight, I know it's a very familiar concept as it relates to the blood of Jesus. And we know that scripture lets us know that, the, that there is life in the blood. Hallelujah. That every creature under heaven, the, the legality that sets a physical being apart from a spiritual one is not only flesh, but blood. And that's why the Bible says that flesh and blood cannot enter into the kingdom because the kingdom is spiritual. And so because there is life in the blood, the essence of, an, of human existence or existence in the realm of the flesh comes through the blood, God does not take the shedding of blood lightly. We see where the children of Israel were secured by blood. Hallelujah. The blood of the lamb delivered from judgment and destruction. It is said that the Egyptians, according to their history, that they 
believed that the name of a human being was eternal. And tradition suggests that they would carve their names in the lintels and the doors of their houses. And that they would make the lintels and the doors out of stone and use brick and mortar for the rest. But the lintel and the door, the entrance point, that their names were on it because they believe that if the house is torn down and if they even physically die, as long as their names remained etched in stones, that they were guaranteed eternal life. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, God gave Moses an instruction. And the instruction was to put the blood of the Passover lamb on the lintel and the door. And the significance here was to shift the perception of the children of Israel because the majority of them were born in in slavery and in bondage. And they picked up patterns that belong to the Egyptians. And so the smearing of the blood on the lintels and the doors, let them understand that deliverance and eternal life was locked only in the blood of the lamb, that there was only one guarantee for salvation, one guarantee for eternal life. And that was the blood of the lamb. And so, brothers and sisters, we recognize that the blood began to speak and declare the power of the living God in, in Egypt. And we recognize that the blood also was a covering. Hallelujah. They experienced, this is the children of Israel experienced the covering of the blood of Jesus, as it were. Hallelujah. They were covered, the Bible says, from the angel of death, or in other words, covered from the spirit of untimely or premature death. The angel in charge of death had to pass over when it heard the arguments of the blood that was up on the lintel and the door. The justification of life over death was declared through the power of the blood of the Lamb. We recognize that God is a covenant making and a covenant keeping God. And that his covenants are eternal in essence, but demonstrated in time and space. And so, brothers and sisters, God is a God who demands that blood come into, come into action in a covenant. Hallelujah. He is the Lord of the covenant. And so nobody can enter covenant with God without there being shedding of blood. I want us to recognize that spiritual, spiritual covenants are established and enforced by blood because it is the essence of physical life. And so because it is the essence of physical life, the greatest sacrifice that anybody can make is a sacrifice unto blood. Hallelujah. And so brothers and sisters, the covenants that God uh, leads his people in, they are legally binding in the courts of heaven. And they operate based on the laws that govern the particular covenant. We recognize that there are blessings and judgments attached to the covenant. And so when God uh, commissions blood, blood is the thing that ties the covenant. Blood is the thing that gives life to the covenant, that gives strength to the covenant, that authenticates the covenant. That's why the Bible lets us know that there is no remission of sin without the shedding of blood. In other words, you are not getting ready to get over anything or to walk in any uh, level of deliverance without the blood beginning to negotiate on your behalf. 
It is impossible for you to be taken seriously in the realm of the spirit. And God understands this without the shedding of blood. And then there are universal covenants and there are covenants made according to kingship and covenants made according to generational impact and multiplication. And so brothers and sisters, because God played so much weight on covenants, and so much weight on the process into covenant that the blood of Jesus, the Bible lets us know that the blood of Jesus speaks. The blood represents, the blood of Jesus Christ represents the covenants of God. Hallelujah. The Bible lets us know, according to the book of Hebrews, that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of Abel. The Bible tells us that uh, uh, when Cain killed Abel, that his blood began to cry out from the ground. In other words, brothers and sisters, blood has a voice, a voice that demands expression. The Bible says that the blood of Abel began to cry out. And when you look at it in the Hebrew, it literally means to cry out for help, for justice and judgment. Watch this now. He was crying out for justice and judgment against untimely death. Hallelujah. And because his blood was not silent uh, concerning his demise, there was an automatic curse released on his killer, released on the perpetrator. The Bible says that uh, Cain was cursed, that he would till the soil and nothing would be produced. In other words, brothers and sisters, there was a curse manifested against his prosperity because of the shedding of of innocent blood. The blood was shed without a cause. The blood was shed in an illegal manner. And so, brothers and sisters, a curse was released. Hallelujah. The Bible says that he would become a fugitive upon the face of the earth. In other words, he would be running for the rest of his life. He would be looking over his shoulder. The Bible says that he would be tormented and would never find stability. And so I want you to understand today, if the Bible says that the blood of Jesus spoke or speaks better things than the blood of Abel. It means that the blood of Jesus Christ is indeed superior blood. And if Abel's blood could testify from the ground, I want you to understand that the blood of Jesus, every time it is released, begins to testify. The blood speaks against the blood of evil and crooked covenants. Now I want to break it down. There is a difference between an evil covenant and a crooked one. An evil covenant is a covenant made with the shedding of the blood of, of goats and of animals in order to trap the sneer, in order to bring into destruction. That is the covenant that is evil. There is the crooked covenant. Brothers and sisters, when men kill, when men uh, seek to destroy, when men break the hymen through rape, there is a shedding of blood. When you rape, there is a shedding of blood. And so it is a crooked covenant. I want you to understand that whenever you draw blood, you wound somebody. It is, it is considered a crooked covenant. And the blood of Jesus begins to speak. The Bible lets us know that by the shedding of blood. If you shed blood that by men's blood, uh, you ought to receive your recompense. And so, brothers and sisters, these things initiate crooked covenants. And so, some of us, uh, people's blood have been drawn in our families uh, through strife, uh, through evil, through our uh, uh, various uh, rages in the hearts of men. And the blood was spilled, and it becomes an ordinance of war. And this Destruction in the bloodline. But I want you to understand today that the blood of Jesus speaks better things than the blood of any other human being or circumstance.
that is shed in your life. The blood negotiates, brothers and sisters, the terms of your release and demands your unconditional freedom that regardless of what the enemy wants to hold up in the courts of heaven concerning you, ah, that the blood of Jesus Christ overcomes and prevails against the arguments of Satan, sin, hell, and the grave. And so when the songwriter says that there, that the blood prevails, the blood of Jesus prevails. I want you to understand what it prevails against. It prevails against the argument that would cause you to come into judgment. It prevails against the argument that will cause you to become, to get to a place of of judgment and a censorship because of what you or your forefathers have done. And so, brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus is superior blood. And so, because it is a blood that is superior blood, it can cancel out uh, the ordinances set by any kind and form of inferior blood. Every time there is the shedding of blood, there is the possibility of covenant. There is the possibility of an ordinance or a precedence or a law being set or enforced. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand tonight that any worker of iniquity sprinkling blood to trap you or your loved one must be overruled by the blood of the Lamb. The blood of Jesus is going to overrule and overturn every other blood that is being shed to bring you into captivity and to bind up your life. And so, brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus has a dual effect. While the blood brings you deliverance, it is bringing destruction to the enemies of God. Ah, the blood, Lord Jesus Christ will expose the enemy and will bring him into sudden judgment and sudden destruction while the blood rescues you. The blood punishes the wicked. Then the Bible lets us know that there is a class of man. There is a set of men called bloody men. These are men, the Bible says, that literally make their trade in blood. In other words, brothers and sisters, this is how they live. This is how they get paid. This is how they are able to move forward by the shedding of blood. It is literally their trade. The Bible says that there are men among us that cannot sleep until they shed blood because their trade is blood. These are murderers and killers and assassins. There is a difference between a murderer and a killer. A murderer car takes life illegally. A killer can kill you on the premise of it being legal or by law. And then there are those that are given our contracts to kill. And so you have got to speak. When you speak the blood, you have got to speak against the power of bloody men. You have got to speak against murder, but you have got to also speak against killing. That you will not lose your life before your time. That you will not become a victim of untimely death and a victim of premature death. Hallelujah. Then there are the eaters of flesh and the drinkers of blood. The Bible outlines out many episodes of cannibalism. The Bible lets us know that there were people in Israel that brought their children through fire, that they sacrificed their children through fire and gave praise to the God of fire, which was Molech. And so, brothers and sisters, there are those mighty God that drink blood and eat flesh because of the demonic spirit that they have to feed, that they are possessed by. Ah, brothers and sisters, this the shedding or the drinking of blood empowers them ah, and causes them to find strength to do their evil works. And so when you are applying the blood, you have got to declare that this is the superior blood of the lamb, that no blood that is being drunk on any altar is going to overrule and overturn the power of the shed blood of the 
lamb. And Jesus gave us a pattern. He said, unless you eat of my flesh and drink of my blood, you have no part with me. Ah, oh, he was speaking metaphorically, not literally, but it is a spiritual law that Jesus was uh, declaring that you have no covenant. You have no part with the kingdom of darkness. You have no part with the ranks and file in the kingdom of darkness unless blood comes into play. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Then there is what is called blood guiltiness. God releases torment on those brothers and sisters who shed blood illegally in order to perform our spiritual act. Now, blood guiltiness is not just for people who commit murder and kill. Anybody that sheds blood illegally to perform our spiritual acts is guilty or comes under uh, the judgment or the torment of blood guiltiness. No wonder the Bible says it is he, God, who makes divine us mad. Necromancers are uh, the class of workers of iniquity. Uh, those brothers and sisters that consult with the dead. Those that build altars unto idols. These are diviners, the soothsayers. The Bible says that God is the one that will drive them out of their minds. Hallelujah to God. And so, brothers and sisters, God will exact upon the medium of Satan, the vengeance for the blood, because understand that the blood of the animals that are being shed illegally upon an altar uh, is beginning to protest against the illegal use of their blood. And so, brothers and sisters, I want you to understand that because God shut down, he shut down the requirement to be using blood after the blood of Jesus, that every other blood that is being shed after the shed blood, the superior blood of Jesus that summed up the sacrificial system of the Old Testament, that every other blood, ah, there is going to be a protest in the realm of the spirit. Then there are blood thirsty spirits. There are predators, brothers and sisters, that want to suck out your virtue, want to suck out your life, want to suck out your possibilities. You have got to know when a predator is around. The predator, brothers and sisters, hunts by the scent of blood. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And so you've got to learn that when people betray you and when things start to go wrong, that you do not allow your blood to be spilled. Ah, oh, whether it is literal or it is metaphorical, that you learn how to bind up your wounds because there are predators. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God that have come out and they are seeking blood. They are hunters of blood. They are hunters of virtue. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Some of these people that you see raping children, they are possessed by the spirit of a predator because they need to break a hymen. Those that must cut their victims and leave incisions on the body, they are possessed with the spirit of the predator. They have got to suck blood in order to be empowered. But tonight, the devil is a liar. I want you to also understand that the spirit of Babylon is a spirit that sucks and hunts after blood. Who is Babylon? Babylon is the system of seduction and witchcraft. What is Babylon? Babylon is the system that penetrates the world. What is Babylon? Babylon is a system, brothers and sisters, that leads people into idolatry, that leads people into having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. Oh, Babylon has a religious spirit. Babylon carries a religious religious order. And so you've got to be careful that you are under the covenant of God. The Bible lets us know in the book of Revelation that Babylon will be drunk, brothers and sisters, with the blood of the innocent. Ah, oh, Babylon loves the pure. Babylon loves the innocent. Babylon loves those that have not been exposed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We see people die. We see all sorts of horrific things happen, especially to our children. 
children did not deserve to die this way or to have this thing happen to them. It is the spirit of Babylon and you've got to be able to recognize it. And so brothers and sisters, Babylon is strengthened by the pursuit and the devouring of blood. And so you have got to learn to cover your children under your blood, under the blood of Jesus. You've got to learn to cover your sons and your daughters, oh, your brothers and your sisters, your family members and your associates up under the blood, oh, brothers and sisters, to cover them from the onslaught of the spirit of Babylon. Never allow bloodshed to go unchecked in your life or your family. Hallelujah to God. Never allow bloodshed to go unchecked in your life or in your family. Whether it is somebody that died, whether it is a rape, whether it's somebody wounding, wounding with intent, never allow shed blood to go unchecked in your family in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. It also can be insect. That is the shedding of blood. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, an accident can cause the shedding of blood. Never allow the shedding of blood to go unchecked. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, because the, the shedding of blood, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, enforces our covenant. It uh, enforces ordinance. It gives the devil legal ground to cause certain patterns to begin to manifest in your life. Never just allow a family member with a near relative or far to go or to become a victim of the God. You just it aside and say, oh, it's one of those things. The devil is a liar. Even if the person, brothers and sisters, was walking uh, according to the dictates of this world, even if they were rebelling against God, this person is in your bloodline and your bloodline will become contaminated because blood, brothers and sisters, speaks. Blood is going to speak to blood. And wherever there is a breach by the shedding of blood. The devil is going to take advantage. Ah, even excessive bleeding at the time of the mother cannot be left unshaken. Blood disorders and blood diseases cannot be left unshaken because there is life in the blood. The woman with the issue of blood was losing strength, was losing life was losing productivity. And so you've got to break the ordinance by the only language that blood understands, which is the superior blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You have got to learn to deploy the blood. You have got to learn to send the blood. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. The blood must begin to negotiate and make war against every other blood that is speaking against your life, your family, and your bloodline. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, the blood of Jesus has got to cover the era that the devil created a breach in. Hallelujah. The blood has got to seal the wound that came in the realm of the spirit. The blood has got to seal the era that the devil wants to take authority because there is authority that is given unto man upon the earth by the shedding of blood. Understand that blood, brothers and sisters, is a weapon because it has authority backed in it. Ah, oh, brothers and sisters, understand that when Jesus died on the cross and his blood was shed, the authority backing Jesus, who was God himself, the Holy Spirit that was backing Jesus, the host of heaven, all of that authority was released in the blood. And so, brothers and sisters, if there is blood on an evil altar, our hell is backing. Ah, uh, the authority of hell is backing that blood. And so, brothers and sisters, you have got to recognize that you have got to uh, superimpose the blood of Jesus over the blood of bullocks and lambs 
over the blood of even men in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Because I understand it that the blood of Jesus has the power to silence the blood of animals and of men. It has the power to silence them permanently. The Bible says that once Jesus uh, uh, died on the cross, there was no need for another sacrificial lamb, that he entered into the holies of holies once as our high priest. There was no need for a continuation, and so there was no need for a continued negotiation. There was no need for a continued argument with any other blood, because Jesus died once, hallelujah to the Lamb of God, and the blood of Jesus automatically began to silence every other blood that began to argue. And so, brothers and sisters, understand that there is overcoming power by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says to us in the book of Revelation that we overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Now let me break this down a little. When the Bible says the word of your testimony, it's not referring to what we define as testimony, meaning we are praising God. What it literally means, brothers and sisters, is that you overcome the devil by the testimony of the blood of the lamb are testifying against every judgment that the enemy is holding up against you in the court of law. The testimony that the scripture is referring to is when you go to court and you are called to testify, you are called to declare and to give evidence concerning a matter. That is what it's talking about. And so because you are going in there with the blood, ah, that when you open your mouth because you are covered by the blood of the lamb our oh, brothers and sisters and the bible lets us know that the blood of jesus appeased the judgment and the wrath of god it simply means then brothers and sisters no matter what the devil is holding up against you in the court of god when you open your mouth to declare a thing the blood has already given you favor the blood has already declared your victory the bible also says that that we enter the holies of holies by the blood of the Lamb. We enter the realm of glory by the blood of the Lamb. Ah, the holies of holies, brothers and sisters, is where the throne of God is, is where the judicial system of God is, is where the final judgment of God resides. Hallelujah. And so, brothers and sisters, this is where you have access to divine favor. And so, brothers and sisters, this is why the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace that you might have favor or help in the time of need because you enter in by the blood. You go in and you come out by the blood of the Lamb. Ah, the blood gives you access to territories that sin would have blocked you out of. The blood, brothers and sisters, prevails against the onslaught of the wicked. The blood, brothers and sisters, pulls us to tap into the realm of the supernatural and causes us to partake of the wonder working power of God. The blood, brothers and sisters, is a sign that there is going to be a release of the blessing and the power of God. And so, brothers and sisters, you have got to know and understand that you enter into the holies of holies. You enter into the place of glory by the blood of Jesus. And so the Bible lets us know in the last day, hallelujah, that when Jesus comes to judge the earth, he will be wearing a robe that is drenched in blood. He will be wearing a robe. The Bible describes him as having uh, many crowns upon his head. It describes him as uh, riding on a white horse. It describes him as having the, uh, the name, the word of God engraved upon his thigh. It describes him as having brothers and sisters 
eyes that are of a flame of fire and out of his mouth coming a two-edged sword. And the Bible lets us know that the, that the hosts of heaven are backing up Jesus. And the Bible lets us know that his vesture or his robe is drenched in blood. It is by uh, the execution of the adversary that the blood of Jesus Christ uh, has drenched his robe. It is by the shed blood of the cross, brothers and sisters, that his robe is drenched in blood. And so I want us to understand that every time God rides in, as we say, ride on, King Jesus, that is riding and speaking judgment and making war concerning all uh, the things that pertain unto life and pertain unto our prosperity, that God is going to contend with every enemy of our soul until they are completely destroyed. And so tonight, brothers and sisters, when you apply the blood, understand that the blood redeems and the blood reconciles and the blood uh, delivers but the blood also brings destruction. The blood also permanently silent. The blood also uh, causes diviners to go mad. The blood also bring forward the kingdom and the enforcement of the kingdom of the living God. And so as we pray tonight, we want to Release the power of the blood of Jesus over every area of our lives. We want to release the power of the blood of Jesus over our families tonight. We want to release the blood over every area of our lives and over everything that concerns us. And we want the blood of Jesus to begin to speak better things than the blood of Abel, than the blood of any man, than the blood of any animal on any altar. Amen. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you for the shed blood of Jesus. We thank you, mighty God, for the redemptive power of the blood. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we are bought out of sin and destruction and redeemed by the blood of the Lamb. Tonight, mighty God, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of our testimonies. Mighty God, we apply the blood over our minds tonight. We apply the blood against everything that wars against our minds, against everything that is contrary to your will. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ right now in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood and as we apply the blood, let every spirit of depression flee in the mighty name of Jesus. As we apply the blood, let every spirit of oppression over our minds flee. As we apply the blood, let every spirit of insanity go in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, our memories that have caused us to be trapped, memories that have been are recycled in our minds, mighty God, memories that are being rehearsed in our minds of a negative sort, let the blood begin to dislodge them, mighty God, let the blood destroy the stronghold that have been built up in our minds in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, tendencies and thought patterns, mighty God, that don't line up with your will. Let the power of the blood begin to break them down in the name of Jesus and utterly destroy them, Father, in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus over our spiritual eyes. Let all forms of blindness, all forms of spiritual blindness be broken off of our eyes by the blood of Jesus. All forms, mighty God, of darkness over spiritual 
tonight, mighty God, that it be broken now by the blood of Jesus. Mighty God, we come up against all forms of spiritual deafness with the blood of Jesus. Heal our spiritual ears. Heal our inner ear with the blood of Jesus. Mighty God, every spirit of deception and delusion that has attached itself to us because we are not hearing you clearly. Let their powers begin to give way now by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Lamb. Let them give forth now, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Heal our spiritual ears in the mighty name of Jesus. Let every covenant made with the kingdom of darkness through blood tonight be overruled and overturned by the superior blood of the Lamb in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, we sever their power now. We break their power now. Mighty God, we break the ordinance now by the blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ, the blood, Lord Jesus Christ, of animals, mighty God, and even men, Lord God, sacrifice, Lord Jesus. We break their power now in the name of Jesus Christ, by the superior blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus, we declare that the high priest of God is the law, the legal high priest, and every other priest and every other altar must be brought to sudden destruction in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name name of Jesus, Kalabasa. in the name of Jesus, mighty God, any, anything that belongs to us uh, that is being bathed in blood on an altar, let it be overruled and overturned and brought to destruction now, in the name of Jesus Christ, anything are uh, connected to our DNA, our sweat, Lord Jesus, our oh, hear, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, any part of our skin, mighty God, that is on an altar today, God, we command it to be destroyed by the blood of the Lamb, in the name of Jesus, Father God, let destruction come to every altar by the fire of the living God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Father God, wherever blood was spilled in our family and in our bloodlines, mighty God, we close the breach today with the blood of the Lamb. We close the breach. Father God Almighty, we overrule the ordinance by the blood of the Lamb in the name of Jesus Christ. We come up against untimely death. We come up against premature death and destruction in our family and in our bloodline. We come up against illegal access. Father God, to sex illegal access. Our God Almighty, just to the shedding of blood that has a sexual our connotation attached to it in the name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ. No covenant will be made outside of marriage in the name of Jesus. We come against every fornicating spirit and every adulterous spirit tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus, we come up against and arrest the spirit of incest and arrest the spirit of rape in the name of Jesus Christ. And we arrest every spirit of sexual perversion in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, our oh God Almighty, any wounding, oh, it all oh, with intent, mighty God, because of physical fight that caused blood to be drawn. We arrest and overrule and overturn the ordinance now. The spirit of violence will not have dominion over our families and over our bloodlines for all generations unborn to time. We make a decree that there will be no more shedding of blood as long as the sun is in the sky, that peace will be in our walls and in our borders. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus, that no family member will turn on another family member to injure, to maim, or to kill in the name of Jesus. For your name's sake and your mercy's sake. Mighty God, we arrest the ordinance of the shedding of blood over our nation. We arrest the ordinance. Oh, God Almighty, of 
murder and of accidents, mighty God, and freak accidents of rape and plunder in the name of Jesus Christ. We arrest the ordinances now and we break their power, oh God, over this nation in the mighty name of Jesus. Arise, God, arise in your power. As we apply the blood of Jesus, we apply the blood over our nation. We apply the blood over the soul of this nation. We apply the blood of Jesus over the destiny of this nation. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we ask Father God Almighty that the blood covering never be lifted. In the name of Jesus, that when we call out to you concerning your blood, that the blood will continually raise up a standard in the name of Jesus and come to our defense in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah to God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Glory to the Lamb of God, hallelujah. We give the Lord praise tonight, hallelujah. We thank him for the power of his blood. Thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, we thank God for the power of his blood. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God, thank you, Jesus, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who is under the sound of my voice that the place that you live, the place that you live, hallelujah, has been contaminated by the blood of animals. Hallelujah. That there are ordinance sets in the place that there are unnatural occurrences happening in your physical environment, things that you cannot explain because blood was shed. Hallelujah, in the foundation of your property, whether it is a rented property or our own property. Tonight I arrest the blood that is speaking up out of the ground over your property now. In the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are, I want you to use the screen as a point of agreement with me in this prayer. I arrest the, the blood that is speaking up out of the ground wherever you are living. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command the ordinance to break. I command and demand the covenant to break now. In the name of Jesus, I arrest tormenting spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, I arrest our hunters of the night. In the name of Jesus, I arrest night raiders. In the name of Jesus, that assault you in the sleep because of the ground that you are on. In the name of Jesus. Jesus Christ, let the ordinance be broken by the blood and by the fire of the living God. Let it be broken now in the name of Jesus. I plead the blood of Jesus Christ over your environment now and I command the covenant to break. I demand that the devil give up the ground, that he give up the territory now in the name of Jesus. Akanda makusata, akata lava makusanda, makunda makusunda baha, mandolo baba kusuta, makashata lava makasata. I pluck it up by the roots in the name of Jesus. I pluck it up, makama, makuta baha, makashanda makasata, akanda lava makashanda. I pluck it up by the roots in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, and by the superior blood of the Lamb. Let it be risen up now and brought to nothing in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to his name. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to the name of the living God. Ah, I release you from the torment of tormenting spirit now in the name of Jesus by the shed blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. By the shed blood of the Lamb. 
Alabakusura Babakashanda, Enda Bakasaya. Hallelujah. 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 I see a port of entry. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I don't know who has family or who has a business that is located in St. Thomas. I see a port of entry that a territorial spirit has taken over because blood has been shed, that there is a covenant at the entry point. But tonight, by the superior blood of the Lamb, I command the covenant to break in the name of Jesus. I arrest the territorial spirit that is strengthened by blood over St. Thomas. And I command it to be bound now in chains of iron and fixers uh, of iron now and to be cast down, to be cast down. I strip the spirit of its authority and power now and command and demand that the citizens of St. Thomas be loose in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, and wherever you are tonight, wherever is the entry and exit point of your community, of your parish, I want us to begin to pray tonight. Ah, I want you to begin to speak against the blood. The blood of the innocent that may be crying out, out of the ground in your community, out of the ground over your parish, your nation, your region, your state, where Wherever you are tonight, I, pray, I ask that you begin to pray. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. We break every covenant now in the name of Jesus. We overrule and overturn every ordinance of death, hell, and the grave by the blood of the Lamb. Listen, if you had your child, if you had your child as a result of a rape, you have got to break the power of that curse in the name of Jesus. If you conceived out of rape, wherever you are tonight, hallelujah, hallelujah, and I'm not trying to embarrass anybody, but if you are conceived out of rape, if you conceived out of an extramarital affair, if you conceived or were conceived out of fornication, ah, uh, brothers and sisters, you've got to break the ordinance in the name of Jesus. Come on, open up your mouth wherever you are tonight and begin to pray against the uh, the blood that may be speaking against your life, against the life of your child, against the life of your nation, your family, your region. In the name of Jesus, let the superior blood of Jesus begin to wipe out the ordinance uh, of judgment written in the name of Jesus. Let the superior blood of Jesus begin to wipe away the stigma of a real mighty God of fornication. Let the blood begin to break the spirit of a bastard in the name of Jesus. Let the blood begin to arrest everything that challenges Ah, the name of our God in the name of Jesus. Ah, let the blood begin to prevail. Let the blood release madness and confusion into the camp of diviners, of soothsayers, of necromancers, of the workers of iniquity tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ, let the blood begin to speak. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Let the blood begin to speak. In the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. All glory to his name. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I want you to also understand tonight, brothers and sisters, that tattoos cause the shedding of blood, that the incision of tattoos on your body causes the shedding of blood. 
Oh, I want us to recognize that the cutting of the body was a part of the worship of idols. And so even if you have a tattoo tonight, and some of us, we have symbols on our bodies that we don't even understand what they mean. Words written on our bodies. But tonight, we overrule the shed blood ah, that are patterns of witchcraft and patterns of adult, uh, idolatry. We overrule them now by the superior blood of the Lamb, by the shed blood of the Lamb. In the name of Jesus Christ, that any spirit attached to a tattoo, they lose its grip over your life now. In the name of Jesus, they lose the grip over your life. Let it lose the sting of idolatry. Let the spirit of idolatry and the desire to serve to God and be pulled away from the things of God be broken now. In the name of Jesus, they dissolve the unwriting of the ordinances that are manifested on your body. Ah, in the name of Jesus, we renounce them now in the name of Jesus. The handwriting of men over your destiny. If your name is written anywhere, Ah, for your destruction, we overrule the ordinances of men written anywhere. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, oh, we overrule and overturn the ordinance. Let it be wiped away forever by the blood of the Lamb. Ah, if the blood can wash away sin, then certainly it can wash away an ordinance written anywhere in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, ah, I send the blood, I send the blood over the resume on any negotiation table concerning your employment. I send the blood all over the contracts that are written concerning your businesses in the name of Jesus Christ. And those that are sitting at a table negotiating uh, the future of your business or your employment, negotiating the, uh, whether you get a host or not, negotiating whatever it is that God has promised you. I send the power of the blood to wipe out every no, to arrest every negative thing that is being written and deliberated against you by any man, any human agent, in any industry, in any walk of life. Let the blood begin to speak a greater word than the words of men. Let the blood begin to counter the arguments of men and the arguments of tradition and the arguments of industries in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, glory to the Lamb of God. Elabashinda. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I have one burning or critical prayer request. Tonight, I'm going to be taking before the Lord. Before we go into the others, if you have a prayer request, please feel free to drop it in the chat. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> Hallelujah. We are being asked to pray for a baby. Amen. And this is 
a baby uh, that is, is unborn, is in the womb, but there is issue with the placenta. Amen. The umbilical cord that the child is to be feeding on. Some dysfunction is there. And so the baby is not developing on the level that it's supposed to be developing because it's not getting enough nutrients. Now, this is, this is the seed of the righteous. Amen. And this is a man of God who is a prophet of God. And so tonight we understand the workings of the dragon. We understand that the enemy's desire is to, is to kill and to devour the seed of the righteous. And so tonight we're going to be praying for this child. And the very fact that the enemy is waging war against it, even in the womb, we know that there is a mighty destiny upon the head of this child. And so we're going to be praying tonight. We are going to be commissioning of divine visitation to the womb of this mother in the name of Jesus. And we are going to be declaring that deliverance and healing is coming or has come at this very moment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I lift up mighty God, Prophet Daniel's wife before you now in the name of Jesus Christ. Mighty God, we wage war on behalf of this child in the womb in the name of Jesus. We apply the blood of Jesus Christ over her now in the name of Jesus. We cancel every spirit of death, hell, and destruction now. We arrest the dragon now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. We release the fire and the judgment of God against the dragon now that has opened up its mouth to tool, mighty God, to devour the righteous seed. We rip the belly of hell open now in the name of Jesus. Father God Almighty, we take the head of the serpent off right now, God, in the name of Jesus. We decree, Father God, complete deliverance. Right now we speak a word over the placenta and we command it to come into order and to come into alignment with the supreme good of heaven. We plead the blood of Jesus over the unbiblical cord. No God. We plead the blood over the baby. We plead the blood over the womb. We plead the blood over the mother. No Father God. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father God let your prayer and begin to overshadow her now in the name of Jesus. We rebuke death and hell now, Father God, and destruction now. We come up against all forms of deformity, brain damage in the name of Jesus Christ. Mental disorders now, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we arrest, Father God Almighty, everything associated with malnutrition in the womb in the name of Jesus Christ. We decree, Father God, that this baby is going to come to full term. We decree that this baby is going to be healthy. All faculties intact. In the name of Jesus, we war over its destiny and purpose now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray that you cover its destiny and purpose up under your blood. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, we come up against all forms of demonic, our oh, God Almighty forces. We come up against the spirit, Father God, of spontaneous abortion, of miscarriage in the name of Jesus Christ. Father God, this womb will hold this child, mighty God. This womb will hold this great destiny and bring it to full term in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, let the angels of the living God be deployed. Mighty God, we ask for angelic reinforcement concerning this matter in the name of Jesus. Incubate them under your blood in the name of Jesus Christ. Let a wall of 
fire be round about them in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father God, at this very hour, we commission a miracle. At this very hour, we command all that to step into her body. At this very hour, we decree, mighty God, that it is well in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, we declare it to be well. Alabashin Nobosa. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We declare it to be well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah.